and they get to school, and then the teacher returner would have known. Did something go wrong at the house today? <laughs> That's when teachers really, you know, had time to check. Got so many reports to do now. They don't have time to do those basic things that we used to have. But, but it was having pride in yourself. So the pride I'm going to talk about is going to be not, not that kind of pride that, that, that should fuel your adult life. Do you have pride in the quality of work you put out, in everything that pertains to you, how you look, the, the, the way you want to present? It's not being overly anything. It's just I have pride in myself that I want to look all right. Amen? Amen? Amen. I'm looking at a bunch of people that look like they took pride in themselves today. Amen. You know, I, 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 you, you pushed it in one direction or the other, I cut it all off. You know, <laughs> something happened today. You know, Amen. some got trimmed, some got crimped, some heat was on some. You, you know. Amen. Amen. I'm not even gonna say some glue went somewhere. You know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Then I want to get to the negative side of pride. It can, it can be described as excessive and extreme. Excessive and extreme. Self-esteem. Excessive and extreme self-esteem. Unreasonable conceit. In light of one's own superiority, be it in talents, beauty, wealth, accomplishment, rank, or elevation. It shows itself in lofty, puffed up airs. That's pride. I'm better than anybody else. Nobody can get along with you because you better. You superior. Buffed up. My former pastor, uh, Reverend Nix, used to say this. He used to say, because we had real great choir. It was just phenomenal. And, and they could sing without music just as well as with music just as good. It was just, they were just a great choir. And, and the point was, he would, he would serve notice on everybody, including them, that if somebody that's sitting out there that hasn't gotten up yet, they can beat y'all singing. Yeah, that's right. So don't get puffed up. Yeah, right. Every time I look at skating, I think of one uh, 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 little skater from Michigan. She was real young in those days, and all the other skaters, uh, I I including our favorite, uh, our favorite Michelle Kwan, who we just wanted to win every time and we were just crazy about and she was a darling and a sweetheart but out of nowhere came this this young person by the name of uh tara lipinski and and her 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 routine and her program was so good to when she did one of those spins and she zipped off the ice and she did a spin in the air i didn't think she was ever gonna come down and when she finally did, she landed it and, and, and took off and did all of her, 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 her stuff that she was supposed to do in the program. And she got tens and she, she won the top award. And, and she was so young. And, and all the other older skaters, I know they were thinking, where did she come from? But she had been watching them for years. I'm talking about pride. Pride. But negative pride, let me continue in this. It is contempt for others also. You get so puffed up that you can't live with nobody. Amen. So as we move into the lesson, I'm going to start out with the origin of pride. Everything has its start that is negative in the earth. 
It was a seed from somewhere. It had its origin. But the origin of pride didn't start on earth, and I'm going to talk about the progression. It started in heaven. It started in heaven. Now, while it's not of heaven, it's a byproduct of someone that was in heaven. That, and and it's, it's all about Satan who thought he was just all of that. He was so beautiful till he had horns all over himself that when the winds of heaven blew, that they would just make a melodious sound that went through. He even was encrusted with jewels till even when he saw the reflection of himself, he said, oh, I can't stand myself. I look that good. He was beautiful. And he got puffed up because, because he was the musician. He was the worship leader. He, he, He kind of gave the note that sound. And so let's begin in Isaiah because it chronicles a, a, a before time, earth time, an eternity time where, where, where Satan was. Angels only know eternity. Have no idea of time. So when, when Isaiah sees it, he looks back and chronicles what the Holy Spirit gives him about the fall of Satan. And Isaiah 14, 12 through 14 says, How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How you are cut down to the ground. That means thrown down to earth. How did you fall from that lofty estate? You who weaken the nations, for you have said in your heart, pride starts in the heart. I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be, but this was the part that really got him in trouble. I will be like the most high. I will be like the most high. Who is the most high? He got so full of himself till he, he just said, this is where I'm going to put myself. I'm going to go above the clock above the, the, the highest point in heaven, the north side. I mean, and heaven is north. Well, I could work, work with that for a while, but ooh, that's why we fictitiously give Santa Claus the North Pole, but <laughs> because the world wants to pervert the direction of where it is. And, 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 and north is even shifting. As the world is more wickeder, it's shifting its direction. But north is staying the same. So all of your geo stuff, your, 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 your stuff that your guidance system are being readjusted now. Okay, that's another message somewhere. <laughs> the aim of Satan's pride. This was his pride was to exalt himself and place himself above God. He was so caught up in his beauty and duty that he became so self-absorbed, he felt he did not need God. Anytime you say, I will be as the most high, don't mean that I need to ask you anything because I'm going to be like you. And, excuse me, and although we don't say that, when we operate in pride, we replace God as our go-to person. Every time you depend on you and your thinking and your reasoning 
and, and, and we will try to reason our way out of it with something that he gave us. Reasoning ability. This is Satan. Lucifer. God created him. And the creation stood up and said, I'm going to be you. Now this is a creative being that was not made in his image. If there's anybody that can say, I'm going to be like God, it's us. But not pridefully. But 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 Lucifer couldn't say that. There is no redemption for angels. They have no soul. <laughs> Are y'all out there? They have no soul. That's when they fall, they go straight away. They go out of the presence. I don't know why in hell he didn't go straight to hell. He had to land on earth. Come on, y'all. You know my thought reasoning and my imagination took up. Just go straight to where you want to be and leave us the hell alone. Is that cussing? Is that no? I, I, I'm on the. Uh. But later on. But let me say this. At that same time, Jesus was in heaven watching the scene, sitting next to his father. And it's, it's during that time that, 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 that later on we get a recording of what Jesus saw at that time in heaven. Oh, the Bible is amazing. Luke 10, 18. Just one sentence there. Luke 10, 18. <laughs> and he said to them, Jesus, it's, it's red letter in your Bible. It's not on your pads and stuff, but in a regular Bible, it's red letter. And, 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 and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning. While he was trying to go up, he was falling. <laughs> What's that woman that said, I, I keep falling? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> he was falling and didn't know. And, so, and, 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 and at that time, there was a war in him. Some people say it was a war. That was not a war. See, wars have time, you know, battle. You, Somebody hit, somebody hit back. Then somebody win with some luck. <laughs> Another angel who had no soul, who only knew eternity by the name of Michael, got rid of him in one blow. And that's when Jesus, sitting in the, the bleachers, said, woo, I saw Satan fall like lightning. It was that fast. <laughs> when did we get evidence that Satan and his pride had entered the earth? Let's go to Genesis, the third chapter, one through five. And he had fallen, but he still looked good. 
He didn't look like the snake he became. He was already a snake, but it had to come into manifestation through the word. Genesis 3, 1 through 5. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field. He's cunning. That means he was crafty. He was, he was street. He was cunning, crafty, which the Lord God had made. It said God made him too. Oh, wow. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the servant, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. See, she had to rephrase. See, so he's already tried to pervert it. So if she had stayed in that lane of understanding, yes. come on. Yes. Now, I'm not making her the fault guy or the girl because the fault guy wasn't with her. Amen. I'm questioning where was he at while the devil was talking to her. He should have been covering her then. Yes. How, how did he get up on you? See, we got to see it for all it's worth. And the woman said to the servant, and I'm reading it again, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the middle or the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Well, we know she did more than to eat it. She had to touch it. So she broke a lot of law. But nothing happened when she ate and touched. Because what she repeated is what God said to Adam. She knows it because Adam told her. Y'all get the progression of authority? That's why when Satan wants to get to somebody, he gets to the head. Because it filters down to the people. Pastor and I have been talking about how the enemy is after the pillars of the church. That means he's after the men and women of God. Because if you can destroy us, then you get a whole bunch of people in one shot. It's just like one bowling ball can hit, hit, hit nine pins. And it really doesn't hit all nine pins. It hits one or two. And the two kick the others on out the way. How did I get hit? You were standing there. <laughs> Are y'all there? All right, all right. Then the serpent said to the woman, hear the lie. You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of, your, of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Ooh. So the same pride that said, I will be like the most high, he whispered to her that you'll be like God. So we see it in heaven. We saw the kick out. We saw it on earth. Let me tell you this. Satan has a vision for you. And you can play any game with it, but he has a vision for you. God has a vision for you, but so does Satan. Satan's vision is to get your soul, to keep you from being with God. So he allows you to operate in pride. Ooh. Negative pride. Not the pride that says, I'm proud to be a kid of the most high. I'm proud to be in God. I'm proud to live for God. I'm proud to walk like I live for God. That's good. But the other one is bad because it's separation. Because he knew the moment that you moved into that level of pride, you're going to know like God knows. That means that, that if you know like God knows, then you don't need him. He's canceled. Yes. Yes. Oh, God. 
And you have to be careful that in your walk with the Lord that you don't cancel God out. And it's easy to do. You can get a good job and then you cancel God. You can fall in love with somebody then you cancel God and start moving in the decisions of your pride. That move you out of your position of authority and your position that you need to be in because you're chasing something that looks like it's one thing, but it's something else. The devil appealed to her pride to make it seem like God doesn't want you to have something. And when you start operating that way, you start moving away from the will of God into the will and the vision of Satan for your life. And that's to operate in your personal need. And when you do that, you displace God. Say, so you're not at the center of my life. And what's funny is when all of those things that we put in the center start getting knocked away, then we see what you're made of. You can't serve him. I don't feel like church. I lost this. I can't do this. I, oh, boy. So are we serving him for things? Or are we serving him for who he is? See, we pray hard when we lose our job. We pray hard when the doctors say it's cancer. Or that it's, it's, it's this or it's that. Or, or, or you got two months to live. What, uh, oh, what, I don't have to call the fast. You do. I don't have to say, let's pray. You do it. That's when my phone starts ringing off. The, but, 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 but you can't replace even me with him. I'm not the one. <laughs> Does that make sense? And he uses deception along with pride as key weapons against your eternity with God. He's after your eternity. Last week, I, I, I read how he, they asked Satan, what have you been doing? And he said, I've been walking to and fro, seeking whom I may eat up, totally eat up. He wants to have you for lunch. <laughs> with a side of mayo. Made on a letter sometime. But you to me. <laughs> First John 2 16 through 17. I'm going to give you the three most powerful things, negative things that are in the earth. These are Satan's most powerful weapons in the earth. And out of them just about springs everything. I could add some more to this list, but there are three. There are three. First John 2, 16 through 17. You got it? And it says there, for all that is in the world. Say that with me. For, for all that is in the world. Say it again. For all that is in the world. Where is it at? In the world. Where is it at? In the world. How much is in the world? All. He said, for all that is in the world. That means the next three things that I'm going to mention affect all that's in the world. They affect all that's in the world. Here's number one, the lust of the flesh. Number two, the lust of the eyes. And number three, what is it? The pride of life. Although I'm working with number three today, number one and two are just as potent. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And they work interchangeably. Because I gave them one, two, three doesn't mean they operate one through three. Sometimes pride make you operate in one. Then number two make you operate in one and three. Then in some cases, one, two, and three are operating in tandem together. What's number one? 
two, three. Let's deal with pride in life. It is to love the things of the world more than God. It's usually the seeking of things without God and they become our lifestyle. When they become our lifestyle, they become the standard for living that make people say things like, this is the way we do it. Quote. Unquote. This is who I am. Are you listening at me? Are you looking at this way? Amen. Satan caught a reflection of himself and saw how beautiful he was. Eve saw how beautiful the serpent was. She listened to the wonderful things he said to her, which made her proceed to the next level of sin, which was disobedience. One thing leads to another. I started to say something real bad then, but I'm not going to say that. I'll just share this story. Talking about pride. And the title is, Preacher's Wife Puts on a, an Egg in the box for bad sermons. I don't want to give you all any ideas either. <laughs> a preacher found a shoebox in a closet. He opened it and found strange contents. Inside was an egg carton with five eggs. How many? Five. Next to the egg was a stack of bills that totaled over $10,000. As soon as his wife walked through the door, he stopped her to ask if she knew anything about this odd combination, the eggs and the money. And she said, yes, dear. After we got married, I decided that after every sermon you preach, if it was a, a bad one, I would put an egg in this shoebox. The preacher thought with pride, about all the years they had been married and that only five eggs were in the box. He said, but honey, what about the $10,000? Oh, well, she said, every time I got a dozen eggs, I sold them. <laughs> attractive, lofty, world-based thing do we seek to replace God with? What set of screens and keys do we replace God with that we can't hear him because we occupy? What Android or iPhone do we replace him with? Or iPad? Here's three words. God hates pride. And anything that replaces him, he hates it. He's the God that early on say, I will have no other God. So anything that you have that replaces him in your life, you have stamped it with a date for destruction at some point in the future. Oh my God. But before we get sideways or start walking in condemnation, many scriptures share what God has in place to counteract pride. 
Here comes the scripture rundown. Let's go with it. Don't have time to, to stop. Got to keep moving. Psalm 10 and 4, NIV. And it says, in his pride, the wicked man does not seek him. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. Proverbs 8.13, NIV. To fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior, and perverse speech. What is perverse speech? Anything against him. Oh, oh. Proverbs 11 and 2, everything else is New King James Version. When pride comes, then comes shame. Wow. So whenever something that makes you shame, it's because you operated in pride. Ooh. And the pride of this thing. The pride of the thing will make you get shameful when you realize when you're shown up that it's not God. So you get shameful. There are many sins that make you get shameful. But here is, here is, here is the flip side when I say that, God's, that, that God can counteract. But with the humble is wisdom. So humble means I submit to God as my center comes, comes wisdom. When you submit to God, you have access to his information that makes you wise. When you submit to God, you have access to his information that makes you wise. And some people keep telling me, I hear you, I know what you're saying, but it doesn't play out for me because you're not operating in wisdom. I'd rather hear your oper see your operation than hear your words. I'd rather hear that helped me rather than it was a good sermon. I don't want it to be in the egg count. I wanted to know that it helped. You, so we can stop doing the same old thing expecting a different result. Ow, 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 ow. Well, just stand up and don't hit it. Some people like to complain about the aisle. But won't stop the activity. Ooh. Proverbs 13 and 10. By pride comes nothing but strife. When you operate in the pride of life, and that's pride mean, mean, mean you won't be transparent, you won't come through, you won't operate in the ways that you need to operate, and so you're constantly always in strife. Nobody's life is ever supposed to be in the flux of strife all the time. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is why are you in flux every time and in strife? Could it be the pride of not acknowledging what you're not wanting to move or get rid of so that you won't be in strife? When your ear hurts, go to the doctor for it. If your feet hurt, go to the doctor or change shoes. If you can't see, get you some help. Come on. Never forget when I got sent home from school. I didn't want to sit in the front, and I always sat in the back, and I sat in the back squinting, trying to pretend like I could write out everything. And there again, another smart instructor, she, you know, them was the days when they would, they would pin a note on you, and it got home.
It got home. They, they put it right here. In broad daylight. To make sure mama saw it. Big old envelope. And you bet not go in it. And, and in it she wrote, take Lucille to have his eyes examined. Then a little while later, I showed back up with some, you know, they only had one style of glasses in them days. <laughs> I was so embarrassed, I wanted to break them on the way to school. But I thought I'd get murdered. Here I come in with my, I had a bald head there, big old bald head, and them, them glasses. But to my joy, I could see. And I wasn't squinting, I could fight out, and it was reflective in my work. See, pride will keep you blind when what you need is to get you some help. And I'm not talking about glamour glasses. I'm talking about something with some medicine in it. Yeah. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Oh, my God. Proverbs 13 and 10. Did I give that to you? Yeah. Pride will keep you in trouble. But the ending of that verse said, but with the well-advised is wisdom. Well-advised. Once you are well-advised, you operate in wisdom. Wisdom will keep you well. Wisdom will help you hang on to your money longer. Wisdom will tell you, you every sale is not for you. Every sale paper doesn't have your name on it. After the one day sale, in a few days, they're going to have another one day sale. Then it's going to be the founder's sale. Then it's going to be president day sale. Then the next day they're going to be make your own sale. How many of you know I'm right about that? Amen. And there's a certain change stuff. They good at just having multiple sales on top of sale. And I, I can run through the store and I see the people taking one sign out, putting another one in. And I just wait because I'll buy something one day and it'll be for one price. I just did that. And, and I waited till that sale showed up. And I kept my receipt and I run back in there on them. I said, I want my 40% off for this. Plus that other special 20% that you give it. And they said, I'll, I'll see what I can do. I said, I said, okay, I just wait. And they get to hitting buttons. And then she said, the change returning to you is. And I said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Are y'all out there? Does that make sense? How many know I'm talking right today? All right, all right, come. Proverbs 16 and 18. Just a little ways to go. Pride goes before destruction. Don't play with pride because the end of it is destruction. And a haughty spirit before a fall. That's why Satan fell, because he got haughty. James 4, 6 through 10. Here is the beauty. This is the beautiful verse. I like these first five words, but he gives more grace. Thank you, God. Come on. Yeah, that's a shouting place. I don't care what go wrong, but you give more grace. I don't care where it's wrong. Thank him, because you read in this. This ought to be your mantra for the week, but he gives more grace. More special favor. More ways out. Come on, come on. Say it, but it gives more grace. Come on, how many of you need that line? Just, just that line, don't get toe upset, but it gives more grace. Therefore, 
From this point, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Come on. That makes the first five letters make more sense. He resists the proud. Come on. You don't need it to be in the resistance of God. Ooh. But gives grace to the humble. Therefore, do what? Then do what? One word. Who? And he will do what? Is it possible that resistance is enough to get rid of the devil? Yes, because that's what the Bible says. Resist. Resist. That means, that means you push back. When he shows up looking like Lucifer, but he's really a serpent, you push back. Resist the devil. This is where I have to operate now. This is with me. It's not just with you. It's what, what, what I'm dealing with now. I, I, I have to resist him. And all the little stuff along the way that he wants to, to get me engrafted into, I have to resist the devil. And the Bible says he'll flee from you. See, the problem is you're weak to resist. You don't want to resist because it's what you want to do in your pride. But pride goes before destruction. So you must push back. You want to live? You want to survive? You want to save your soul? Come on, don't play a game with it. You can't live it like you've been living it. Because it's not going to work. If Satan fell, you will fall. I will fall. Come on. Are you out there? It's not going to work. Do it God's way. Snatch him in. If it hurts somebody and something, put him at the center. And say, it's got to come to this because nothing else going to work. You may want it to work, but it's not going to work. Do you put him here? You may use all your little tactics and all your manly and womanly things, but it ain't going. Are, are y'all out there? Then it says, draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Come on, come on. Come here, Helene. I want you to get on that wall and start walking toward me, and I'm going to get on this wall. And, 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 and I'm not going to be as the most high. I'm just <laughs> acting like him today. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The optimal is that you, you getting right here. See, where we met is the place where, where our pride is not. Are you there? And it says, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be torn, be turned to mourning, and your joy to gloom. That's if you decide to stay in pride. But humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And he will. Come on. Yeah. The goal of God is not the vision of Satan. The vision of Satan is to destroy you. Separate you. Get your soul. But God says, as you draw nigh to me, as you humble yourself to me, as you submit to me, I will. I want God's elevator. Hallelujah. 
And God is so great. He loved us so much that when Satan showed up armed with pride, the thing that got him thrown out of heaven and away from the presence of God, he sent Jesus to change the direction of our gaze. Not that, but him. Blessings to you today. Yes. Father, we thank you for a word in due season. A word that challenges us past where we're comfortable and moves us into thinking seriously about you and who you are. Not only are you the center of our joy, but you're the center of our very lives. Oh God, oh God. And we rebuke anything that wants to replace you in our lives. Help us to see you differently. Help us to let these words so deep in our heart. Because you have a sure answer for everything. Draw nigh to you. Humble yourself. Operate in your wisdom. Seek you for wisdom. You have an answer for pride. So that we can move into good pride and say, I'm proud to be a believer. Proud to serve you. Proud that you are my God. And proud to say there's nobody else but you. And we thank you. And we thank you. And we bless you today. Bless the heroes in this house. That they'll be doers. No good sermon, but Lord, thank you for help. Thank you for help. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. All over the room, give God a good praise. Come on, come on, give him a good praise. He's worthy. You're all I want. You're all I've never, never needed. I've ever needed. You're all I want. What do you want him to do? Blessings on you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessings on you today. Hallelujah. How many of you thank them that you got mercy? Sir? We got mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We sit here as an example of the mercy of God. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. Everybody with your offering envelope. 